everyone. So, part two of the Palo Alto Cytoside IPv6 VP I recorded uh, earlier. Uh, in the first video, I've shown you the configuration and how it is done on the Cisco IOS. Uh, the part two will be focusing entirely on how do we configure the IP6 IPv6 I2Z VPN on Palo Alto Firewall. And uh, in the end, we will be testing the firewall and we will see whether we are getting encrypted packets or not between the Palo Alto Firewall and the Cisco IOS. Let me route of five. Uh, now, in the first video, I have already configured to five. Okay, uh, just to recap, this is the topology. Okay. So, Palo Alto Firewall connects with router three, which is the service provider router, which connects five. I would request anybody who is directly watching this video to first do the part one and come to this video because then you will be able to properly understand it. Uh, the Palo Alto connects with ISP and router five. Router five is uh, having a loop back interface which represent a uh, remote location so our job is to ensure that we can create a tunnel between router 5 and Palo Alto firewall and we want encrypted traffic to float between VLAN 101 which happens to be using 1061101 subnet uh, from 101 to 192.168.100 which we are looking to encrypt the traffic so the subnet which is behind the Palo Alto firewall is going to be VLAN 101 Variation on router 5. So, router 5 is done. And we move on to uh, the Palo Alto firewall. Palo Alto uh, GUI access. My management interface is using 192.168.57.130. Uh, this firewall is pre configured are uh, multiple interfaces. So the evil slash one basically is a private interface which uh, goes to the multi-layer switch. And evil slash three is okay. So that we have covered in uh, part one anyway. This is the five which I have configured in the first part. Uh, the IPC configuration is done over here. Okay, the IMP is on. Today, uh, my focus will be entirely on the Palo Alto. Firewall. So, if you configure site to site VPN, uh, how do you go about doing that on a Palo Alto Firewall? Okay, so I'm just going to give you a brief steps. Over the short for Palo Alto. So, what are the things which I need to do? So, I'll just run the steps and I'll keep on showing that to you. Okay. So, what are the first thing which I need to do on a Palo Alto firewall? Now, ways in which you can start working on it. Okay. We'll work on. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a tunnel interface. To create a tunnel sub interface. I'm going to do is I'm going to create an gateway. I'm going to create a crypto profile. I'm going to IPsec profile. And I'll know what exactly are these steps all all about. Uh, if you remember, I spoke about uh, the way we configure uh, IPsec VPN. We primarily divide the task into phase one configuration and phase two configuration. It does not change. It does not change on any of the vendors. So whether it's Palo Alto Firewall or a Juniper Firewall or a Cisco Router or a Cisco Firewall, the basic configuration logic remains same. Okay, but yes, this is something very specific to Palo Alto Firewall. But the ultimate logic is same. We are going to configure Phase One and Phase Two, right? Obviously, uh, every vendor has certain different ways in which the solutions are implemented. So I will talk about them, uh, those specific uh, uh, differences as well. Uh, IPsec profile. I'll configure the static route. Good. Sec tunnel. I'll configure security. So this is uh, going to be a good way to remember what you're supposed to do if you're new to Palo Alto Firewall. It is a good idea to you know uh, remember the number of steps which are involved in any configuration. So there are seven con uh, steps which are going to be involved. In configuration. So now, if you remember these steps, it becomes easy for you to understand what you're supposed to do. 
someone uh, i'm going to configure a tunnel sub interface a white face so like you can create different kind of uh, sub interfaces on your lan interfaces or even your frame relay interfaces similarly on powerwall now Palo Alto supports two kind of tunnels there is a route based tunnel there is a policy based tunnel the tunnel which using is policy based tunnel okay route based tunnel basically is like a gr data ping protocol etc so i'm going to tunnel interface over here now you can see that this uh, the, the interface tunnel okay let's take you through this so yeah you go to network tab interface like interface you create you cat tunnel right and you are going to add a sub interface so you can add any other tunnel interface you need you need to create a sub interface you can any number which is valid you can create multiple tunnel interfaces if you wish nothing 100 again it doesn't matter what number i'm taking you can take any random number that's not a problem Come here. Do I need the IPv4 address over here? Okay. I don't have to give an IPv4 address over here because this is going to be a policy-based tunnel. Okay. So you know, if you remember, how does a, a GRE tunnel function? That you assign an IP address to a GRE tunnel. If you are aware of that, IP tunnel is like a virtual circuit. The tunnel interface, sub interface, etc. So if the IP address blank, you are not going to supposed to configure an IP address. Too important is to configure the virtual router and the security zone. Okay, virtual router I'm using default. It's perfectly all right if you're using any other virtual router instance on your Palo Alto firewall. You can use that. The security zone. Now this is going to be interesting. Showing you a couple of variations. Um, first thing which I'm doing is I'm keeping this in the private net zone. Security zone which is private net. Now where is that? This is my Palo Alto firewall, and uh, the interface. Now, actually, let me just put it over here for you guys. So, so even slash one. This interface is uh, basically member of private net zone. The route for VLAN one zero one is coming from this zone. Okay, let me put the routes. So I'm having a SSH connection. It's command for checking the routing table. Follow all to this route. Okay, and I can see uh, 172 is coming from E1 slash one. I guess one. Okay, E1 slash one. Okay, so let's see interface. And, uh, sort of which security zone is part of running OSPF routing protocol all right so on this particular interface I'm receiving this route so if I this is what it is so 101 route will happen on even one interface that will be going path to reach 101 and uh, I can say this VLAN is part of private net also show you uh, what we do is we can if you very specific. You want separate policies for private network and separate policies for uh, VPN traffic. They want to have this particular VLAN uh, in a particular VLAN in a different security zone and not private security zone. Technically, the traffic is still going to come out of private network only. So, yeah, that will be slightly interesting. But right now, what I'm doing is I'm just keeping it as it is. So the traffic for 101 is part of private net uh, security zone. I'm going to keep this particular interface in private net so tunnel interface is part of private net the traffic for tunnel is going to get sourced from private net security zone okay i have created the first thing and the first which is required is a tunnel interface no i was configure it's part of the default router it's uh, using the uh, security zone which is private net that's my part uh, first step down The second step is to configure the I gateway. Now, matter of fact, what you do is you can create these parameters first and then create I gateway. I want you to create an I profile before you gateway. That's important. So let me come to this part. So 
we do is we look at the Ike. Now, just remember, uh, you know, see, there are a few things which makes life easier for you. So Ike is basically phase one, and IPsec is phase two. So just remember all the time. Okay, if you read anything Ike, Isaac AMP, that's all phase one. Okay, crypto. So I'm looking at what? I'm looking at phase one uh, profiles, right? The more you look at IPsec, you're looking at what? Phase two profiles okay so that's the way to remember the things when you deal with vpn now profile will be the phase one parameters okay just have a look at what are the phase one parameters i need so one parameters i need and parameters i've already configured as a score out and, uh, it's uh, mandatory that the parameters must match okay so these are the parameters i've got configured okay this 128 group 5 sha and you know 86 400 sec uh, second is a mod which is 24 hours so let me go to uh, the ike crypto profiles and see what are the profiles which already exist uh, these are the default crypto profiles which exist on palo alto firewall what you will find is that none of them is using group 5 i'm, I'm not like any other parameter right now i just focus on a defilement group over here and none of them is using group 5 a lifetime of 24 hours so profiles are not going to work okay either edit them right or a new profile so the idea to create a new profile okay so create a new profile and this will be meant for what r5 vpn okay uh, and pa is rather use underscore So, in phase one policy, the development group is going to be five. The authorization uh, will be um, uh, hashed using SHA-1. Now, use HMAC, hash base authentication, message authentication. So, we are, uh, whatever secret keys are, are hashed. So SHA-1 for that. For encryption, we are supposed to use AES. Now, AES by default use 128. Unless and until you mention 192.256, the default is 128. The most important part is this part, the life thing. Okay. These are few things which creates a problem in a multi-vendor environment. It's taking the lifetime is 24 hours, and Palo Alto by default is taking only 8 hours. So we have changed this. Which I can mention that. I can mention in second minutes, hours, but we'll make it simple. There is an option for this. So, uh, this comes to one day. Okay. I mean, you can use seconds and mention 86, 400. So that's all, all fine. But, yeah. Okay. Or it's right. So it's all, all good. Minutes will be becoming one four four zero. So I'm going to go for uh, day one day, which is good enough. I'm matching profiles for phase one. Sorry, all right. I've a phase one profile. Okay. Uh, I crypto and I uh, I option over here. So uh, IPsec uh, crypto as well. Actually, I, uh, I am going against my own order. I guess I'm doing this fast and want to come to gateway. Okay. So the phase two parameters, I don't see group five. So the R5. Okay. ESP, there's no question of using H. ESP is going to be my encapsulation for IPsec. Uh, AS28, SHA1, SHA2, SHA3, SHA4, SHA5, SHA6, SHA7, SHA8, SHA9, SHA10, SHA11, SHA12, SHA13, SHA14, SHA15, SHA16, SHA17, SHA18, SHA19, SHA20, SHA21, SHA22, SHA23, SHA24, SHA25, SHA26, SHA27, SHA28, SHA29, SHA30, SHA31, SHA32, SHA33, SHA34, SHA35, SHA36, SHA37, SHA38, SHA39, SHA40, SHA41, SHA42, SHA43, SHA44, SHA45, SHA46, SHA47, SHA48, SHA49, SHA50, SHA51, SHA52, SHA53, SHA54, SHA55, SHA56, SHA57, SHA58, SHA59, SHA60, SHA61, SHA62, SHA63, SHA64, SHA65, SHA66, SHA67, SHA68, SHA69, SHA70, SHA71, SHA72, SHA73, SHA74, SHA75, SHA76, SHA77, SHA78, SHA79, SHA80, SHA81, SHA82, SHA83, SHA84, SHA85, SHA86, SHA87, SHA88, SHA89, SHA90, SHA91, SHA92, SHA93, SHA94, SHA95, SHA96, SHA97, SHA98, SHA99, SHA100, 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 SHA
config policy on uh, follow firewall matching phase one and phase two parameters. Now I'm going to go for I gateway. I'm going to tunnel with whom? So I'm going to create tunnel with router five. R5 tunnel. Uh, now, uh, this I'm using is an uh, old version and it doesn't support what uh, Ike version 2 is support only 15 above. So, uh, here Ike version 1, Ike version 2, okay, or version 2 preferred. Now, uh, important to remember that there is no compatibility between version 1 and version 2. You cannot have one is working with Ike version 1 and other device configured with Ike version 2 that is not going to work okay so they must match I'm going to use Ike version 1 right, right now that's what I'm using uh, we're using IPv4 addresses and what is the interface which is involved over here okay what interface in the sense what interface interface which is connected to the service wider the interface on which then will be created okay so Again, traffic goes out of this interface now. This interface over here, I will just mention. This is uh, the interface which connects with ISP. And it's equals slash 3. Traffic out. And uh, the tunnel interface logically is going to work over here. Uh, when the proxy ID traffic matching, you will put that in uh, traffic on the tunnel so the traffic will go out of even slice 3 to the so even slice 3 is my isp interface and uh, this is going to uh, you know uh, this configuration so outgoing interface is even slice 3 check outgoing interface okay the local ip address of this interface is uh, 136 123 10, uh, 24 the pp is static that peer is using a static public ip there are options uh, uh, where you can configure uh, a peer which is your dynamic IP. Uh, let's take example. Uh, you, you have a couple of DSL, ADSL clients. Okay. So they don't have a static IP. So option. Okay. But I'm a static IP on of my peer. My peer is router 5. And router is using the IP address of 100.5. Okay. And this is 100.5 over here. So, uh, router, that's my target, that's my gateway. All right. The pre key which I'm using now, I am using pre shared key. Okay. If you want to use digital certificate, then you have the option of digital certificate. Uh, you will download a certificate, enroll yourself with the certificate, so and so forth. Right. But right now, we're using pre shared key. Pre key which I've used on Cisco router is Cisco123. So, it's the same over here. If something is wrong over here. Cisco one two three. Yeah, so that is going to the passwords must match. Now the local identification. That means what will be the local interface for Ike version one, which is also known as Ike ID. What will be your Ike ID for when I mean, you do the phase one negotiation? So my identification will be based on IP address. There are options of using fully qualified domain name, okay, or a uh, uh, user FQD, and you can see there is an email address address option label over here as well okay now uh, I'm just going to use what IP address the IP address uh, will be the public interface IP okay the peer identification is also based on IP address okay and the public IP for that is 100.5 uh, right advanced option this is important okay? this option there is a crypto profile which is default I have created a profile, right? I'm, I'm not selected this. I'm just thinking default to work. So what are the problems we are facing? Okay. The DPD dead peer detection is enabled here, right? Uh, IPsec is a virtual circuit, so you never know when the when the tunnel is off. Uh, there is no traffic passing on, right? Uh, DPD will help you in identifying whether your tunnel is uh, tear down, is not working, etc. Uh, Palo Alto also give you a monitoring option if you wish to configure. Uh, you have enable passive mode. In passive mode, you will not be initiating the tunnel. You will be you know, responding the tunnel. Uh, NAT traversal can be enabled if there is a NAT, okay, uh, which is uh, in the path. So you can enable NAT traversal, right? So doing, I'm doing that, but I'm keeping the 
exchange okay let me come to the exchange mode as main mode i going to negotiate okay uh, we are using main mode the problem i'm not going to change the crypto profile as default so let's see what happens with that okay enabling nat traversal there is no nat happening between my firewall and five but so enable this so you can identify there is a nat device in between and then over to the udp port 4, 500 right so you can send the esp under the 4500 when you enable the nat t now the configuration looks pretty much done all right uh, let's take a, uh, a recap of uh, what we have done so far so we created a tunnel sub interface the network you go to the interface and that's another interface and profile ipsec profile and i gateway okay you can find all of them over here i profile ipsec profile and the gateway so all all being configured now so we have one two three four three three steps now Okay, we are coming to the, uh, the final part of the configuration. So, static route. What? Says that on Apollo Alto Firewall, you're taking a tunnel interface. Okay? And an interface, again, is like a virtual uh, circuit. Okay? It's like splitting your physical interface into two. Have a uh, physical interface, even slash three. And uh, let me just, uh, for the heck of it, uh, maybe. Mention it. So you have your evil slash three. Okay, it connects to I. Now once the tunnel interface, okay, is on this this particular interface, and it's going to push out of tunnel interface. So it's going to push out of tunnel interface is the IP six traffic. Okay, what about the rest of the traffic which is going to come over here? This is like it's supposed to go in clear text. Unless the client is itself is initiating some sort of uh, SSL or some sort of an encrypted communication. The file is not going to be involved in any sort of encryption for any other traffic, right? The rest of the traffic is going to internet. And uh, how do I know which is supposed to go to tunnel and which traffic is supposed to go to the internet? So we are going to create a proxy ID which is define the interesting traffic. And we'll the interesting traffic out of the tunnel interface. This is sitting on or binded, bound, bound to this particular public interface only. But interesting traffic. Now, interesting traffic is one, uh, you know, 172.16.101.0/24, 192.168.100.0/24. Right? This is only traffic which is supposed to go through the tunnel interface. Rest of the traffic is going to go to internet in a clear text format. Tell my Palo Alto Firewall. This is something I need on Palo Alto Firewall because using a tunnel interface. Okay. Uh, on life, if you check what I've done on Cisco route, how does it work? Is that you got to have a route? Okay. Static default or pointing toward my ISP. Interface uh, 136.1.100.3 is basically my public my internet interface. To do from routing point of view is you have to tell your router or firewall to send the traffic out of the public interface. Public interface is the tunnel fault takeover. If interesting traffic, it will get through the tunnel, it will encrypt it. Red traffic will go to internet. So that's working. So we have to move the traffic towards the we have to tell the uh, uh, firewall this is the traffic I need to send the tunnel. So I'm going to go to the virtual, uh, virtual router, and I'm going to go to the default instance I'm running. I go to the static routes, and I take route. Okay. This will be the live V traffic. So I only mentioned destination now. The destination, follow all the point of view, is 192.168.100. That is going to be my destination. So 
So how how are you going to send this traffic, right? You can mention interface. Mentioning interface. This is going to be my outgoing interface. Tunnel 100, which virtual interface. We think on evil slash one. Okay, the next top IP. Tunnel interface. Okay, uh, let, let default AD and everything is going to work. Okay, you to tell your system that when the traffic is destined for the private uh, network 192.168.100.0 through the tunnel interface, which will ensure that this traffic is going to get encrypted. Traffic is going to get through the IPsec tunnel. All right, so the path that is a forwarding path which you are identifying for your VPN tra traffic. The stack it out for destination, the private destination is done. Okay, I'm putting your tunnel uh, interface. So, so putting it in the interface, right? So there is no next stop. Right, now comes into picture. Okay. And the static route over here. So, what now? What, are, what is left is these two steps, and I always do them at the end. So, IPsec tunnel has to be created and security policy has to be created. All right. Uh, so, IPsec tunnel over here. So, th you should always do these steps at the last. Okay, some problems start coming. So, to do the most complicated part of the last. So, IPsec tunnel. So, what about, now it's like putting or creating a crypto map, putting everything together. So, the name again, I'm, I'm constantly using R5 VPN. Okay. And the tunnel interface is a tunnel 1.100.100 sub interface. Uh, what are you using? Using auto key? Yes. I mean, we're using which is supposed to provide the auto key, auto key negotiations. Okay. Uh, we are having address type as IPv4. We are not using IPv6 right now. Who's the gateway? So the was configured. As a crypto profile, again, there is a default option over here, IPsec crypto profile. IPsec, keep in mind, is phase two. Okay, phase two crypto profile is going to come in the IPsec. IPsec, no, this, this is a link, right? Phase two is IPsec and IPsec tunnel. So we have option of merging the phase two uh, policy which I have created, and the name was phase two, right? right? So sitting over here. However, I will not find phase one because this one is part of the IK gateway. The I crypto profile, you have to go to the gateway and merge it. You can merge it over here, and option is not even existing over here. If you want to see a couple of advanced options, so you have uh, replay protection, which is enabled by default anyway. Uh, if you want certain sort of QS uh, parameters to be working on, so you have copy toss header uh, service, you have tunnel monitoring enabled if you wish to do that. Okay, I'm not getting into any of these fancy stuff now. TID is my interesting traffic. Again, this is my interesting traffic. So my traffic is uh, from Palo Alto point of view. This is local and this is remote. So I'm using IPv4. I'll say add the proxy. Uh, this again, uh, we can give one a wish. So the local is 172.16.101.0 uh, slash 24. Remote is 192.168.100.0 slash 24. Again, interesting part over here is protocol. Okay, uh, the any work over here. You can specific about, uh, about TCP UDP. Now, if I tell it, say, it will port numbers, right? And this is where you get into the uh, difficult water because you, you you don't want to use the port numbers etc. And until you know how the return traffic will. So this can create a bit of a problem. I'm not saying this should not be done, but should avoid it at the, uh, at the most, okay? So we could give you simple any, right? So donation, done. Okay, proxy ID created. This is my interesting traffic. So in five, on five, I have created an access list to define this. All right? 100 okay moving to 16101 right that's the uh, traffic uh, the uh, inter traffic on router 5 right it, it has to be reverse on my follow firewall it is 
that's all good once you uh of the ipsec tunnel configuration you can see tunnel info options comes over here right i4 uh this is both red it should begin if it's, uh, your tunnel is working and status is green you click over here Okay, invalid gateway option. You just have a look at this configuration again. Gateway. Here, that's the only thing you have. So, you know, it's all good. Okay, what I'll do is I'll just commit to the configuration for once. Committed to the configuration, and uh, the finding is the configuration of security policy. Okay. Now, what exactly is the security policy I require? Uh, how does it work? So, to continue, you what, like, what exactly uh, are we supposed to do with security policy is that is going to come from originate from private net, and it's going to go to the ISP net. The ISP interface is connected to a zone name ISP net. Let me. Take that. So ISP net connected with uh, EVO slash 3, and uh, you can see the private net is having EVO slash 1 as well as the tunnel interface. So it is originating from the private net and is going to ISP, which is originating. Which is originating is this coming from VLAN 101 and going to 192.168.0. Okay. First of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two network objects. Okay. In fact, I don't have to create 101, which already exists. So I have done that, uh, created this for an earlier practical. Now I will have to create an object to define the remote private traffic. Okay, this remote private traffic, which my client is trying to reach. So I'm going to add a network object over here. I'll give it a, a remote uh, a private uh, network. Okay, uh, this is 192.168.100.0.24. <laughs> so, if it is happening is the traffic is supposed to be out between these two. Right now we are configuring a policy based uh, tunnel, okay, and a policy based tunnel traffic is going to pass through the tunnel is decided by the security policy, okay, for the interesting traffic policy. So this is my traffic policy, which we created. I have already mentioned that on my uh, ISIC, uh tunnel configuration, okay. So. And this as a part of the property. Okay, the low and the remote traffic. So a security policy for the same. We have a cleanup rule. It should be at the last statement. And uh, uh, we do not configure a specific policy. Uh, we may get the VPN traffic dropped by the cleanup rule itself. So I'm going to create a policy. We are five. VN policy. The source is uh, the private zone because PN tunnel is part of private zone. This address is uh, N101. N101 is this 172.16.101. Destination is going to be ISP net. All right. So, and the destination address is what? The private network. Got it? Take the traffic from the private, which is local, and the remote private subnet. One is the private net zone, other is in IS net zone. That's what I'm doing. Okay? And uh, what are the actions which I want to take? So I can, I would like to have a log at the start of the session. The traffic should be allowed. All right? It's all good. I have uh, a syslog server configured over here, which is receiving different logs from this uh, port of firewall. So, get any hits over here, we are able to see that. Let's see which I have created is at number 10 now. Okay. Uh, create sequence. Uh, the rule number 9 is cleanup rule, so I have to move this policy. Your VPN policy is at the top. 
VPN policy right at the top. So I have my VPN policy, which has traffic coming from the private net, uh, private network, patient private network. Okay, one minute. So we're all good to now. Okay, configuration steps are almost done. Uh, we should be able to get this tunnel working. Ebooks on out of five. Uh, how will I test it? So I'm going one. Uh, let me see whether the router one is having a default route. Yeah. So if getting a default route, it is also getting this uh, tunnel interface, the private net destination. Because I am reading the static route into OSPF on Palo Alto. Even if we were getting this route, it would not matter because we have a default route. So we know how to 192.168. Okay. A route for that. So again, in R1, I'm going to ping R5 for private network. Okay. And tunnel is up, then I will be able to ping it. If my tunnel is not working properly, there is no way I'm going to read from VLAN 101 to the remote private network. But in between, I have router 3, which is pure service wider router. And this fellow over here, route 3, it doesn't have any private routes. Okay. So it doesn't have any other private routes. It cannot forward the packet on the routing logic. All right. That's why it's not supposed to have private routes. So the tunnel should be between the Palo Alto and the router 5. See now whether it goes. So I'll try to ping 192.168.100.5, I guess that's IP address. Yeah, OK. This IP address. Something is wrong. My tunnel is not working. Wrong. I should be able to see it over here. OK, so I'm my debug is on. Now see, I have deliberately configured certain conf uh, configuration uh, which was not valid. But, uh, we will be doing a little bit of uh, troubleshooting. So you can see the phase one proposal is not accepted. This one is I. So phase one proposal is not acceptable to my Cisco router. Remember, when I created the I policy, I created this phase one policy with group. Default policies which exist over here do not match. I created a special policy for RFI uh, phase one. However, policy must be part of I gateway. All right. I have not added gateway. So the gateway is choosing the default profile. All right. And the default profile is not going to match. I need to change this to 5 VPN phase 1, right? And this configuration. The kicking in. All right. I'm receiving it over here on out of 5. But the phase 1 was not working. Now, let's see. Okay. Uh, so I've changed. I mean, I've added the uh, uh, crypto profile which was supposed to be used for phase one negotiation. Okay, I'm going to keep eyes over here, and uh, I'll come back to one and do the ping again. Okay, and see the ping is going now. All right, I'll do this once more. Right, right. Good. So it's getting on R one. R five. The debugs are still working on. Okay. So first thing which I'm going to check is crypto. I can PC. The one, the phase one is done. Okay, basically working with the remote uh, device, which is uh, my Palo Alto firewall public IP address. For my policies, this is the lifetime which is remaining. The lifetime is matching 24 at both sides. See whether we're getting any traffic which is encrypted. So we're going to check the IP. Now, Ike would, uh, is not responsible for any encryption. So the phase one does not involve any encryption. Okay, This connection ID for phase one. So phase two is where we'll see the encryption decryption happen. 
coming. Okay. This is interesting traffic for life for Palo Alto firewall is it's going to reverse. So the local traffic 192 16800 remote is 172 16101. We can see the packet again encapsulated by ESP, encrypted digest that is basically the hashing the traffic which you are receiving is going to get decapsulated decrypted and verified it's out if I ping okay say I say repeat so you will see is going to go to 19 so everything which is going on between these two uh, firewalls okay is encrypted let me check something on the call firewall now. Okay. So there are different commands which you can use on Palo Alto firewall. Can you show VPN? Now I would like to see the phase one. So I K S A. Okay. Dale. What's in? Five. Tunnel. So uh, gateway. Okay, phase one negotiation. By the way, all right. So we have initiated the uh, the traffic. We are we have negotiated this main mode using pre shared key defilement group five. Right. All parameters can be found over here. Yeah. Okay. And it is for phase two. You are using ESP. All right. You can also come to the Palo Alto firewall over here and look for the tunnel info. Like this is Ike info. Okay, so the same information is available over here. You all is initiator, you're not responder, right? So the traffic was generated by R1, so you are initiator. Okay, and uh, uh, yeah, the same okay. information. So, local uh, remote information how many packet encapsulated, decapsulated? We can see 19, right? This is like phase two bytes, right? So, all those parameters can be visible over here using UIS. As well, okay. So you can use this different CLI commands which are available. The most the the main command is uh, show VPN, and then you, you can get through this, right? So if you say IPsec SA, right? So you're looking at what? So you're looking at the phase two. Uh, You can also see the station. All the you can do seventy-three. Come to this is my phase two. Okay. Bytes are allowed, and how much you have already sent. Now ID seventy-three. So this traffic flow. These two peers revert. Okay, and then you can look at the different timeout values, right? The application is IPsec ESP. Okay. So my tunnels are working fine. Okay, this was a site to site VPN which we have fully created and tested between a score router and a Palo Alto firewall. I hope you have enjoyed the video. Uh, you will turn up for the uh, other video I will be creating pretty soon. Thank you much.